Hello everyone, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to the Slow Splits where we are playing Asphodel. It's turn 22. It's still early morning, so apologize me. Apologize me? My brain. So forgive me. Oh my goodness. All right, it's going to be like that. Um, all right, war continues between uh, us, Facey, a man. Um, let's see what we have in store. So, uh, Conjuration 4, done. On our way to Conjuration 5. We did another Call of the Wild, another reanimation, another pack of wolves. We can see Call of the Wild hits in Lovendalen. Relatively easy peasy. No additional gets. Cool. Uh, we lose 13 wolves there. Not great. Um, but we take the province. And then... Man says... Motherfucker! Two can play at that game. <laughs> and I go, ah, oh, Damn. So, Man also apparently has Call of the Wild. Uh, which is not especially surprising, but is a little painful for us. So, yeah, we'll see how that works out. So, we take Love and Dallin, we lose Sitha. Um, oof. Uh, let's see what else we got. We have uh, attacked into Bycliff, little raiding party, bunch of black centaurs, and there is just a small amount of PD here. No big deal. Black centaurs go in. They smash on the charge, they smash after the charge, and they slaughter. Because that's what they do. Um, so, no losses, very nice. We attack in Facia. And this is, I remember this, this is so freaking beautiful. Because we were like, oh, let's send a small stack just in case he moves his entire army back onto Facia. So what does he do? We've got a scout. And a quite forward positioned heavy cavalry commander. Which I think this might actually be the remnants of a mercenary group? I can't remember. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. He's fatigued out. Almost instantly. Dude fucking runs anyways. Leadership or fucking morale 12. Because... Unlike the base mannequins, the commanders, I think, actually have morale? Or or did it just break on that? So, uh, very interesting situation. Uh, we lose our commander, so our, our people immediately start to crumble. And there's this motherfucker. Um, so. Oof. However, interestingly, uh, let's actually check that real quick. Do, do those commanders... Yeah, they do actually have morale. Unlike the regular um, mannequins, the carrion commanders actually do have morale. Not high morale, either. Interestingly... That is very close. Or actually, I think that's exactly what happened. I don't think there's any replay bug in this. Um, except we're going to see some oddities to it afterwards. <laughs> so that was a beautiful moment. That was actually a beautiful moment. Great read uh, by Facia on that. 
fantastically done. Um, was beautiful to watch. These are, these are small things, but I think these are some of the beautiful, you know, like you get big sweeping battles in the late game, massive armies, so many spells going off, etc., etc. But taking out a like commander sniping someone in a in a manner like this is just it's so choice. It's so good. I love it so much. Um all right, we attacked in Impassable Mountains. This is again another Black Centaur raiding squad. Uh, small amount of PD. Well, actually, I say decent amount of PD here. Uh, but it's not good PD. It's just militias and some heavy infantry. Uh, should be an easy win. Get some skeletons up in there. And that's that. So we win there. Uh, and then we march on Pugria with the whole shebang. Just going straight into some PD. No big deal. Probably lose a couple to our own. Nope, they actually killed him. Nice. So lose a horse, lose a wolf. Otherwise good. Uh, we get attacked in Glistening Wood. This is where we were just at um, with our All of the Wilds. He has a bunch of wolves and some longbowmen. So very interesting. Longbowmen on their own are plenty. He actually probably just killed uh, his own wolves. Yeah, we didn't we didn't kill any wolves. He killed some wolves, uh, and then we attack into Shade Forest. Decent little stack of carrion, bunch of barbarians. Probably should have had those horses on the flank, but we win there. Uh, do lose a fair amount. Like, barbarians kill the shit out of mannequins. You need a lot to overwhelm them or snipe commanders. Um, so, but we take the province back. That's what we wanted. Uh, there is a battle. We'll watch the battle in uh, Sylvania last, actually. Um, we'll watch Vanarus attacking Pythium. Storming Fort. Okay, so Pythium has a bunch of Principes here, has some Retarii's, uh, has a Thurge commander in the back, and a Lion Tribe Witch Doctor out here. Um, also, a Hero! Hero Hierogallus? Interesting. Uh, little, you know, the little um, garrison that's included in Dom 6 now. We've got Spearmen. We've got captains, and then we have in the back what... These are mercs. We don't care about these, or they're not going to matter that much. Uh, in the back, we have the actual thing, right? We have a bunch of herdmen, and we had the chud. Nope, nope. We have the oathbound from Vanarus. So let's see what's up with that. We've got some beast hunters, some bow tribe in the back. Arrow fire exchanged. So, Mind Burn coming out from this Thurge. Poison Darts, Beast Fury, that type of shit. And this looks like it's mostly just going to be a slog in the choke point, right? Um, the issue is, is these fucking Oathbound, and even just the Herdmen, like these chewed Herdmen... Broadsword, 19 damage. Axe, 21 damage. See, like, this is another fucking example of matchup. Man versus Vanarus. Vanarus would be able to produce just a metric shit ton of Heardmen. And they would die in droves. They do have Berserker and decent high protection. They wouldn't die in... Actually, they would... You could produce a shit ton of Heardmen and... They could handle Knights of Man. Not obviously like one to one, but like four to one. Yeah, 100%. They chopped that fucking horse up. <laughs> like, and this is the issue that I'm facing with it's like, there are ways to defeat man, but you, what you need is cheap, hard hitting units. We do not have cheap, hard hitting units. We have expensive, hard hitting units. Uh, that trample into things and then get themselves killed. <laughs> so, so we'll see. See how it goes. Um, 
this is gonna be the long slog in the in the center, right? Uh, Stellar Cascades coming out. Some webs, but the webs are hitting more of friendlies than they are of enemies. Oh, no, we're getting a lot of webs in the back. And it looks like a route on both sides. Oh, no. And the Berserking comes into play because Van, or Van has routed, but these guys are Berserk and they don't fucking care. So, it very well may be a route from both sides, but it is still going to be a loss from Pythium. Presumably, maybe not. Oh! Yep, there's the Pythium route. And there's still one... F oh, he died! There's someone... Oh, this motherfucker's still running away. And he's crippled. Oh! This guy is not running away. Wait. Does Pythium win? Aw, oh, shit. That did not happen. <laughs> Instead... Yay, replay bug. Instead, what happened is the Principes could not actually handle the Heard Men and the Oathbounds in the center. You can see the, the Heard Men get 32 kills. They butcher the Principes and the Retarii's in the choke point, and it's bad. It's just real bad. Spearmen die. They get destroyed, but... The Heardmen, Chud Heardmen, are very, very, very good. 35 gold. They're not inexpensive, right? But these guys are super good. Multiple high damage attacks, berserking, high protection, high hit points. Very, 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 very good. Um, very scary. Uh, so, Vanarus attacks Pythium and wins. And then we have a battle in Sylvania. Not really a battle. Um... We have our garrison, which I do like that we have minotaurs, but that's not really going to help. Um, and... Where is he? Oh, we get a hierophant as a garrison commander, which is kind of cool because this guy can cast spells. Um, so there's that. And it's really nice because if you have mannequins there that Hierophant will always be undead leadership. So they can actually stick around. So we've got a bunch of knights, Divine Blessing. They're holding, which is actually going to be really good for them because if we come out of the choke point, we will get butchered. And exactly that, because of the hold, they come out of the choke point, they massacre everything almost instantaneously, and you can see... Right, like that that flush, uh, actually that wasn't even a bunch of banishments, that was just like one banishment. That was the H3 banishment, I think. Um, just deletes multiple squares of mannequins. Butchery. Absolute butchery. Absolute butchery. Yeah, we can see, uh, the monks are gone. And they did not reinforce. Had we taken the fight, had we moved everything from Asphodel to Sylvania, we probably would have won this. Um, and that hurts. That hurts quite a bit. It it still would have been a very bloody victory. Um, but the 200-ish mannequins... I say 200-ish. Probably about 300-ish mannequins. Um, and the other assortment, the 30 plus Black Centaurs, the 20 um, Minotaurs would have probably been able to do the job against man. And here's the thing, even if we took significant losses um, during that that would probably have been the win. Um, because it just what what we can do on what we can do to replenish ourselves is just so much simpler than what 
man requires to replenish themselves. Especially when it comes to a sacred kind of concept. So that sucks. That's uh, that's very unfortunate. Um, I made a decision based off of the testing that we did, right? Because there, again, the testing that I did was that even without the reinforcement, it was likely to be a heavy um, payment, exact a heavy toll for a victory. Uh, and then if the reinforcement was there, there was the chance for total annihilation. Um, and if we, if we had rolled the dice and they had reinforced all those monks were there, plus the additional Knights of Avalon, if we had lost everything, that absolutely would have been the end of the game for us, most likely. But that's Dominions, right? Like, at, at the end of the day, the vast majority of the game comes down to moments like these, right? Do you make the call to risk it? Or do you play cautiously and miss that window of opportunity? Um, we picked wrong. It happens. So, Sylvania is taken from us. Uh, other things that happen. Sloth 2 in Wick. Ooh, dysentery. How? Wait. I guess it's dysentery in the population. We still have people living there. It's not dysentery among the mannequins. So I, I suppose that's acceptable. Uh, Monarch Woods. Layer of Hideous Troll has been found. We got a bunch of stuff out of it. A little bit of gold. Bunch of gems. I love when I take misfortune and I get good events. <laughs> Speaking of misfortune, everyone gets a little dose of misfortune. So yay, there's that. And then... We, we knew this was probably stupid, but we tried to move our um, werewolves through man, and we got caught, because of course we got caught. And everybody dies. Everybody, everybody, everybody dies. So that's, that's wasteful. We should have gone a safer route or just brought the werewolf home uh, and used them to produce more wolves. It is what it is. Uh, we're under siege in Facia, re repairing faster than they can. Uh, let's take a look. Facia, Facia front, man front. Man front! Facia front is actually where the vast majority of the action is happening this turn. We are consolidating everything on Vakles. I do not expect Facia to stick around, though he might. Um, we're consolidating the army from Pugria. Onto Vaclez, we are pulling in Chiron onto Vaclez, and we're pulling in Perus onto Vaclez. Um, so we're going to have 220 units, um, 40 something, almost 50 Black Centaur, uh, 20 plus Minotaur, um, a bunch of Behemoths, Carrion Behemoths. We're still doing Group Spark Skin, still doing Group Blur. Um, we've got. This is a serious, this is a, a existential threat for Facia. Um, if we get to fight Facia. <laughs> we got 399 siege strength. We're piling in a little bit more. So we'll be a little under four, over 400. This is a 500 integrity wall. There's 100 plus units in there. 100 plus units, many of which are strong. These guys are pretty strong. Uh, Siege defense one. So that being said, a hundred additional siege defense is not going to prevent me from popping these walls in two turns. Uh, we weren't going to pop the walls in one turn anyway, but the additional siege defense is not going to keep us from popping the walls in two turns. issue is all of these motherfuckers. We can see the monks were still there. As well as other things. Because wisely, potentially, probably wisely, um, he didn't send everything that he had into Sylvania there. He just sent what he thought he needed to. So all of the shit that I said a few minutes ago, probably incorrect 
and it may have indeed been the right call because he moved in his own chaff, he has the monks, and that might have actually been disaster if I moved into Sylvania with everything from Ashvedel. It might have been a win, but again, it comes down to that rolling the dice 50-50 kind of like choice uh, situation, and at the end of the day, it is what it is. The reason why I zoom here, though, is we talked about how quickly man can move. It's uh, 30 over here to Vongar. It's not 30 to Vongar. Because in theory, it's thinking of how expensive it is to move out of Sylvania because it's a forest. But man doesn't give a shit about that. So it's actually quite easy for man to get to Vaclez very quickly if he wants to support his ally. So that's going to be an issue. Uh, we're going to have to think about what we can actually do there. Uh, we're patrolling over in Facia, uh, researching, reanimating, um, recruiting. Uh, we actually have... Oh, right. Like, this motherfucking thing happened in Facia. I don't know what in in the real game. Not not a potentially bugged report. That motherfucker lived. <laughs> he existed. And then he was just gone. I don't know why. I don't know why Facia is open now. Um I have no earthly idea. Um uh, But to my memory, that guy did not flee the battlefield, he won the battle, everything else decayed, and my commander retreated in into Basia. Um, and I don't know, but we have access to Basia, so we're gonna start recruiting Dryad Hags, Jade Maidens. Again, Jade Maidens aren't going to be very killy, but they are gonna be very hard to kill because of our bless. Um, adding them into the mix allows us to raid easily and allows us to put like wings or or augment centers to be more robust and less likely to just fold immediately plus they're not honestly super expensive with the 45 gold but they're sacred right so they don't cost us a lot of upkeep and we've got a lot of money right so uh doing that back over in man they've taken sylvania we've raided a couple things back uh what are we doing we're sneaking Mostly this turn, we are attacking into Namor with um, just some mannequin chaff uh, while we're sneaking a, the wolf party from Love and Dalin in. Uh, also sneaking both of our centaur stacks over into Kingdom of Dara, potentially so that we can raid the eastern edges of man, but also to su try to support, right? Like this is another 20 centaurs. It could make the difference in a fight if we need it against Facia or if we need it against Man. Um, so there's that whole situation. And then we're moving a bunch of people around primarily for um, uh, just moving mannequins. And I don't know why this happens. We sneak 10 centaurs into Sitha. I don't know why we didn't just attack it. I'm really unsure about this. This this is probably one of those situations. I do this every time I play elves. Um, when I have stealthy units, I will often forget to shift or to control click. And I'll just click and I'll be like, yeah, go attack that. Um, and miss that it's a gray arrow. So this is probably just a mistake. It happens, whatever, right? Um, other things that we are doing. We are recruiting a new Panic Apostate in Monarch Woods. We are recruiting more Lizard Shamans in Emicton. We are recruiting more Sages and Minotaur Warriors. Again, trying to get a large enough mass. The plan is get a large enough mass, get Howl, take Howl onto the battlefield, have enough people to choke up man and just smash a bunch of knights of avalon right that's the idea um more dryad hags more black centaurs these guys don't exist yet i promise they're coming soon 
and uh, sadness. Our population has finally dropped to the point to where we don't have enough recruitment points to actually recruit uh, all of the black centaurs that we would want. I think this actually happened a, a couple turns ago, but I thought I'd point it out, right? Because we have holy points, we can't use them. Uh, it saddens me. Um, and then last little thing, we're doing another Call of the Wild. But to the south this time, because Flower Manor Forest is a forest and is actually in range. So we're going to see if we can snipe this province and then have an easier line back into his stuff. If we do, right, then that could be really nice for us to, to again, just put the pressure on man, try to threaten him, uh, try to cause some issues while we are teching up. It's turn 22. And our research speed is 419. That ain't bad. Um, in fact, I would say that's probably potentially pretty good. So pretty, pre I'd be pretty interested in seeing what other people's research is at this point in the game. I, I don't think that this is the highest you could get by any stretch of the imagination. But I, I would be willing to bet that we're doing pretty solid. Um, while we might not be the highest in the game, I would be willing to bet that we're, we're up there, right? We're close and we're climbing. Sages every single turn is producing a metric shit ton of research for us. Um, and we're going to try to take full advantage of it and see how it goes. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed. Um... Any other crazy things that I wanted to point out? I really want more Carrion Behemoths, and we're not getting them. Um, I also would love more Sagittarian Carcasses, and we're not really getting them. We had a couple of turns where we got really lucky, where we got like a shit ton of Carrion Behemoths, um, and a shit ton of Sagittarian Carcasses. Uh, and then we just kind of did not have that happen more. We are consolidating in Asphodel, right, with the concept of moving on Sylvania. Um, or countering Sylvania, uh, or man, if he tries to come in on Asphodel. Because it's possible that he's just like, Rambo, let's go, right? Uh, and tries to jump on us. So, we'll see how it goes. That, I think, is the end of this situation Stab somebody with your sword of, sword of sharpness. Do we have anything? No. Thanks for hanging out. War is heating up? Cooling down? I don't know. We're just trying to kill Facia and hope that Ulm comes in to fight man and make things easier for us. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.